Welcome back folks. I'm Brad and today we're back out on the hunting lease. So this is going to be a Piney Grove hunting lease edition. So what we're doing today is spreading some fertilizer. I sprayed Piney Grove yesterday and I actually wanted to come out here on the lease and spread 10 bags of fertilizer on my two main hunting pots. But it's a Sunday morning. I'm out here. I've got uh, 10 bags of fertilizer. I got my ATV and my Cabela's 2.0 spreader. I did a review on the Cabela's 2.0 spreader on the Piney Grove video, but uh, I just want to reiterate that uh, it is really a wonderful tool for, you know, whether you're doing food pots for hunting or gardening or, you know, small acreage. I do the whole entire cleared area of Piney Grove that's in pasture that is about six acres plus the one acre food pot. So we're looking at seven acres. I do all of that with that spreader. And I buy fertilizer in 50 pound bags because it's not um, it's not efficient for me to buy it in bulk. But uh, that is a very useful tool. And I, I don't think I mentioned that in the Piney Grove video, but I wanted to mention that now that uh, you can do a lot of acreage with these little spreaders. But you see the green pot behind me? We actually had a good rain shower come through. It's part of the storm system that set off all those tornadoes across the Midwest. Fortunately for us, we didn't get any tornadoes out of it and it was very weak when it came across, but it did dump a good, good amount of rain and the pots are really responding. Ideally, I would have got that fertilizer out last night or yesterday afternoon before the rain, but again, it would have been a two hour drive here, a good two hours of spreading fertilizer, hour drive back. I wouldn't have got home till dark and, and that's just not fair to our animals at home. Between the moisture in the ground and the dew in the morning, we'll get a lot of benefits of this fertilizer. We might lose a little bit of nitrogen in the 13-13-13 mix because nitrogen is more volatile and can evaporate. Um, so that's a risk that we have here because we really do need nitrogen, but again, um, you know, I'm a weekend warrior, I have a full-time job, and I can only get out here so much. So let's get this four-wheeler unloaded. One of the downfalls of having to trail or something everywhere, not living on the area that you hunt or that you homestead, is you always have to think about what you're going to bring and make sure you bring everything. And as usual, I forgot something. I forgot wire ties or plastic zip ties, I guess. And I have to go to our way station, our deer way station, because we have some extras there. That will hold on my deflector so that fertilizer doesn't get all over the back of my four-wheeler. So let's get this thing unloaded and get this day started. While I'm over on this side of the property, I thought I'd talk about this plot because this plot really hasn't been featured on this channel at all. So the last time you saw this plot is when I was helping my friend track his doe. But what we have here is about an acre or so of clover on the north end of the plot. And this clover is persisting from a last year planting, from a 2020 planting. What we did this year is we tilled about three widths of the tiller. So that would be 15 feet. And we planted our normal mixture of rye, wheat, oats, clover, and chicory right here. And you can just see how lush and green it is. So what that does is it gives the deer choices. And come over here to the high protein clover and you can actually see the clover is blossoming out we've had some warm days there but you probably see some white blossoms of the clover so they have that choice or they can come over here and get the tender young grains and the new chicory and the new clover that's coming up but this is what they call strip planting where you don't plant the whole area in the same thing and you put new strips. So we have a new strip all the way around this plot. So it goes all the way back there and then makes a big circle and then comes out behind this oak tree. And then in the center, we have clover. So you give the deer a variety, um, a variety of different things to eat. Now there is clover here and here, but right now on this right side, it's not clover that's feeding them. It's those nice tender grains that are coming up. And you can see just how green this is. And you can see the four wheeler marks from where my friend spread the fertilizer Friday, and here it is Sunday after a rain, and it's already greened up. In the Piney Grove video, I mentioned that we had a cyclone spreader, and here it is. It's inverted right now because we want to preserve it as much as possible. They tend to rust, and we've actually replaced the fins on it already, and we use stainless steel hardware. But these are relatively inexpensive and they're lightweight, so you can hook them up real quick, but it's still easier, much easier 
to use the ATV spreader. So this is the after. And that's the before. But I got to get in that log book for our lease and get some plastic ties so I can get fertilizing my plots. Okay, I got the wire ties. You'll see how to put on a sweatshirt. It's 62 degrees. That's cold for Florida. So I went over the operation and the reason for these deflectors in my Piney Grove fertilizing video and when I did a review on this spreader. But this spreader has this metal plate right here and that keeps fertilizer from going forward, but fertilizer will go forward if you don't do something. So I came up with this poster board system so to keep all the fertilizer back here so that it's not on the four-wheeler and it's not on me. And speaking of four-wheeler, I watch a lot of Alaska shows and they call them wheelers. And that's weird to me. I'm not going to call it a wheeler. And sometimes I'll say quad, but most of the time I say four wheeler. And I guess sometimes I say ATV. So what do y'all call it? What do you call your ATV, your four wheeler, your quad, your wheeler? So it's a bit of a pain to have to do that every time, but it's so worth it because fertilizer is so corrosive. It keeps the fertilizer, well, it keeps it off of me because it will run down your back or the back of your pants, but it keeps it off the four-wheeler and that's, that's what's important. If you don't keep it off the four-wheeler, it's going to rust and if it rusts, then the frame's going to crack and you're just going to have issues. So take care of your equipment and one way to take care of your equipment is doing things like this and like I said, although it's it's a bit of a pain and it takes up a little bit of time. It's worth it in the long run. I'll get a lot more years out of this four-wheeler because I've kept fertilizer from going on the frame. One thing that was a huge game changer for me was buying this trailer rather than loading a four-wheeler up on the truck all the time. As I get older, those things seem more risky. You know, you'll break a hip doing that. But I, I now carry my four-wheeler on my trailer. But one thing I really like about my trailer is I can lower my tailgate down without the the hitch jack being in the way and that that's huge because you always need to get stuff out of your truck and you don't want to put a dent in the back of your tailgate so keep that in mind if you buy a trailer i'm opening these on the ground because i don't want any fertilizer to spill in the bed of my truck it'll find its way down to the cracks and crevices and it'll rust out your tailgate I didn't use the screen on top of the bin this time and as I was dumping the fertilizer I did see some clumps in there so hopefully it won't bind up I'll just have to keep an eye on it but that's 100 pounds I'll show you how much it filled it that's what we got 100 pounds of triple 13 so I've got three pots in this area the biggest pots behind me it's about an acre then I have another pot that way to my left that is half acre maybe a little less and then I have a little quarter acre or less plot so I got five bags of fertilizer I'm gonna do one bag on the little pot, two bags on a medium sized pot, and that'll leave me two bags. And there'll be some left over in the bin for this pot behind me. And this pot is my main pot in this area. They use all three, but this is the one that I can see the easiest from my hunting condo. So remember when I said I didn't need to use the screen, I was wrong, that was just so painful trying to spread that pot because the fertilizer had clumped in the bottom just like the oats did when i planted and i had to keep sticking my finger up in the bottom of the flow hole or the flow tube so that uh, the fertilizer would flow so now i'm going to bail it out all this effort could have been saved just by putting the screen on top and I have the screen with me. I'm gonna blame the camera. If I wasn't explaining to the camera, I probably would have had the screen on. Back in business.
So you may be wondering why am I spending money fertilizing a plot that looks this green? Because it's not a farmer's field, you know, you're not trying to make a living off a cash crop. So, so why the expense? Why do it? You know, you've already taken two deer off of this plot right here, or off of this plot, off of this uh, hunting area. So, you know, you're almost, almost tagged out. Why spend the money? Why spend $250 in fertilizer? And the reason is, it's, it's not about just killing animals. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. Probably people that watch our channel do. They understand that there's a, uh, there's a relationship between sportsmen and homesteaders and farmers of animals that we care for them, but we also recognize that they're there for a purpose and that purpose is to nourish us. But that's what a pot does. It nourishes the deer, it nourishes the herd, it nourishes the land. So as I put this fertilizer down, yes, at an expense to me, but these nutrients will end up in the deer's body, whether it's a doe to make a healthier fawn next year, or whether it's a buck so it has a better rack and also a healthier body, you know. Um, we You can't eat horns, they say. It's true, you can't eat horns, so we also want our bucks to be big so that we get more meat off of them. So that's why I'm doing it. It's not about uh, pulling the trigger. I know for a lot of people, that's what they think hunting is. It's, you know, you want to go out there and you want to kill animals. I, I want to care for the herd. I want to selectively take animals when I see the one that I want for nutrition. And yes, I do target big bucks if there's one around, but I also eat all that meat off the bucks. So I think that's an important part of being a sportsman is giving back. And this is how I'm giving back today. This is a good example of clumping. So when that gets down in the flow gate, it really restricts it. And then you, you're not putting out fertilizer at the rate that you want to. It doesn't take much to break these up, but there's no agitator in the bottom of the spreader. So just vibration will break them up. But that's why the screen is valuable. You may notice my four wheelers bouncing up and down a lot as I go across this plot. And that's mainly because when we tilled it with the rototiller, if you don't keep a constant speed with the rototiller, then it'll tend to clump as you kind of have a jerky motion forward. If you don't have a consistent motion going forward, then it'll tend to create what I call moguls out here. So this plot is gonna be really, really fun to mow next year, unless the rain can knock some of these hills down. Now, most of this pot is kind of sandy, at least on that side of the camera, but the rest of it is kind of more, well, it's more wet. I don't know if there's more clay, but I know the other side is not going to wash down at all. So, like I said, it's going to be fun to mow next year. So, if you watch my video, How to Plant a Food Pot, Step 3, we were out here tilling, and we tilled in all the thatch that was here. But if you go back to Step 1, you saw me bush hog this area and go around and around in a circle. And I'll put that video up now. But what I wanna show is how much that thatch has incorporated into the soil. So all that thatch that I was mowing around and around with is now tilled into the soil. So you say big deal, the thatch is tilled into the soil. Well, this is sandy soil. This is Florida. It's very sandy out here. There's not a lot of nutrients in the soil. So soil tends to leach or the nutrients tend to leach down through the soil quickly. So your potassium, your phosphorus, your nitrogen, your micronutrients, they all go down because there's nothing to stop them. There's no clay. Imagine a pond with a clay lining. The clay stops the water from seeping down. There is no clay in the soil or there's very little. So when you increase the organic matter, which is all of that leafy stuff that I chopped up, then you make for better soil. You're building your soil. You're adding organic matter, and that means your soil can retain water better. That means it can retain nutrients better. And that's what we do with these food pots, is that every year after year, we build them up with that organic matter, and we don't take anything off of a food pot. Except for a deer, we harvest deer, but we don't harvest the wheat, the rye, the oats, the clover, all that gets tilled back in and improves the soil. Here's a prime example of that thatch. Now this didn't get tilled in because it was so close to this pine tree, 
but that's what was all over this plot. But now that's been tilled in and it's been incorporated with the soil. Okay, so we're done with this plot. This is the first of two major pot areas that I have to do. The four wheelers loaded up and I'm gonna head off to the next plot and knock that one out. We're at the plot I call T-cell and we're gonna fertilize it. This plot is getting a lot of usage by deer. So if you look over my shoulder, you're gonna see that there's greenery, but it's not nearly the greenery of the pots that we just left. That's because the deer are just munching it down. There's probably 12, 14 deer that are using this pot regularly, but I wanna get this pot greened up and nice and thick and lush because this is the pot I typically take my buck out of. I'm looking forward to sitting here at Christmas, January timeframe when they really start moving. So let's get to spreading. So there's no way I'd be able to have these nice of pots without a tractor. It's just been too much work over the years, but you can certainly see how valuable this ATV is to my operation. You've seen it in action in Piney Grove when we did some spraying and we did uh, some planting, the same thing out here on my leash. You saw it spreading all the seed and towing the colta packer. You saw it spraying the weeds and now you see it spreading fertilizer. So there's many ways you can spread fertilizer. We've done it by hand. We've done it with the tractor cyclone spreader, but this is by far the easiest, most efficient. To be honest, it's fun. I like driving this thing around at 60 some degrees. You know, there's no better way to spend a early winter day in Florida. Hey guys i need to wrap this thing up i just got a text from deb she's on a plane coming home and i better not be late getting to the airport so i got to finish this pot up and then i got to load up everything get home clean it off put it away let the dogs out and then meet her at the airport so i got a lot to do in a short amount of time so hopefully you enjoyed today's video if you did please give us a big thumbs up that really helps out our channel subscribe if you would and recommend to your friends if you would other than that that's all i've got you guys take care we'll catch you on the next one